Well, there might always be a slightly voyeuristic angle in, <laughs> in anything I do, but uh, we might Why take is a... That? Uh, I don't know. I, I, maybe I am a little bit of a, a voyeur. A, a conservative voyeur. I'm not up on any rooftop. How interesting would it be if, <laughs> you know, people watch people like us acting like ourselves? Uh, well, I think that actually might be incredibly interesting because we're clearly two fascinating people. Lonnie Stark of Stark Silver Creek and I'm here with Seth Owen, director of Peepers. Uh, Seth, a question that everybody wonders mm -hmm. is, we obviously see the influence of Weir Window in this mm -hmm. movie. How did, you know, how did you come up with this theme and how much influence was that movie on Peepers? Well, you know, it, it, that's one of the greats and Weir Window is of course, it's, it's one of my favorite Hitchcocks and uh, fantastic movie. I like, I think it's somehow, we've made a film about voyeurism and it's just kind of tricked people into mentioning us in the same breath as Rear Window, <laughs> more than it actually <laughs> is on the same uh, uh, level or anything like that. But uh, Good technique, good to, it was I think working. It's, yeah, it's pretty good. You just make a film with a similar subject matter to a classic film and then next thing you know. But, uh, you know, I think voyeurism is, is clearly, it's a very cinematic subject matter. So we kind of knew if we were making a film about voyeurism, you kind of can't help but, but you know, make kind of cinematic uh, quote, quotations yes. to a lot of classics. But um, I think uh, if anyone goes in there expecting a comedic rear window, uh, they'll probably be a little disappointed as this is a film which, which uh, no one is murdered in, uh, at least on screen. And um, if someone was murdered in the film, I think the characters would not necessarily notice as they're too, <laughs> <laughs> too concerned with their own yes. uh, petty problems. The characters that are going around this troop of, or club or I don't know what mm -hmm. it is that go around and sort of peep into other people's lives. Mm -hmm. Are there actually groups like this, or is this? Uh, I mean, did you research a little into? Hey, is this something that people do? Well, yeah. This is the the main conceit of the film is that peeping toms might actually peep together, and as far as I know, kind of like it, bird watching clubs. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And as far as I know, that is a complete fiction. Uh, when we were kind of, we ended up researching the film, you know, after we'd already started it. And we did find, um, we found this article in a, a, a local newspaper in Montreal that, that described the actions of a, a peeping Tom. And it was remarkably close to what we had come up with, which was kind of surprising. To me, it's also, it's really about kind of um, the age of voyeurism that we're kind of living in. And I think even maybe more, I think even though, you know, maybe peeping Toms don't congregate together on rooftops, but I think you do find on the internet, you know, there are these kind of like forums and chat rooms and stuff where, where people do really, there are these little societies that kind of form around these very personal sexual proclivities. And, <laughs> and they do kind of abide by a code like the peepers in the, in the film do. And they do have kind of a set, um, you know, a, a code that they, they operate by. And when interlopers come in, they do kind of all close ranks around them. So I think the phenomenon kind of exists around sexual behavior, but maybe not necessarily on rooftops <laughs> in the middle of the night. It would just not make a great film yeah. if you know, you're just filming people watching computer screens and like typing away, That's kind right? of my feeling. I, I've, I've yet to see a film where people typing away and being on the internet is, is you know, visually stimulating. So we decided to make it kind of literal. Is this your first film? Have you produced other films in the past, directed other films in the past? Well, myself and the, the two gentlemen that I wrote the movie with, Dan Perlmutter and Mark Plutsky, we've been operating as this um, kind of underground movie studio called Automatic Vaudeville Studios in Montreal for over a decade now. And uh, this is really our first proper feature film. We teamed up with the producer, Andy State, to make it a little bit above board. <laughs> you know, we actually had a budget yes. and, uh, you know, it, that's all, that was all very new to us because our whole philosophy was making films for absolutely no money with our friends, you know. I yes. think our, our largest budget until this film was about $400. Wow. So, um, so we made a lot of movies, but most of them were completely disposable. What was the budget on this movie? This movie was, it came out to, I think it's around 400000 in the end. Okay. Yeah. So sort of like 400 mm -hmm. at three zeros. Exactly. And, and then we're, we're in the ballpark. Yes. Yeah. Were there, when you started collaborating mm -hmm. on this idea, were there certain ideas that were thrown out that just, now that you look at the film you think it would be interesting to either do it as a sequel or it'd be interesting to put it in or... Yeah, there are a lot of characters in the film and there's a lot of story ideas that of course we kind of embraced at one point and then threw out and yeah, I do kind of miss some of them of course and um, you know, yeah, Peeper's television show, Peeper's sequel, I mean I think I really like the characters, and I think there's a lot of different stories you could you can tell with them. How did you do the casting for this? 
Well, we were lucky. The producer we were working with was actually a casting agent. Um, and, you know, we have a kind of a repertory company of people we've worked with over the last mm -hmm. decade. So it was a kind of a nice marriage of people who were a little bit more professional and people who we'd worked with before. And in some cases, <laughs> professional people who we'd worked with before. <laughs> now could actually afford to bring them on and make a real movie. You're like, oh, you remember all those yeah. favors before <laughs> exactly. I asked you? This time, it's a real movie. Yeah. Well, uh, there might always be a slightly voyeuristic angle in, <laughs> in anything I do, but uh, we might Why take is a... That? Uh, I don't know. I, I, maybe I am a little bit of a, a voyeur. A, a conservative voyeur. I'm not up on any rooftops or anything uh, like that. But um, I think, you know, I, I'm working on a couple of things now and I'm, of course, still collaborating with uh, Dan and Mark and uh, some of the other people involved with the film. I think um, just for people that go to see movies, there's always this amount, element of voyeurism, yeah, right? Whether it is, you know, through windows or looking through a screen mm -hmm. and seeing other people's lives, I think the movies that are successful are the ones that people can identify yeah. with some characters. I mean, that's why you have heroes, action yeah. films. Yeah, absolutely. And we're, what we're kind of hoping with this film is that even though the, the characters are perhaps a, a touch reprehensible and you know you, you might be disgusted with their behavior initially, eventually you kind of come to identify with a little bit of, of part of what they're doing and kind of get in touch with your inner voyeur. How interesting would it be if you know, <laughs> people watch people like us acting like ourselves? I, well, I think that actually might be incredibly interesting because yeah. we're clearly two fascinating people. But I'm very excited. I've just been uh, strutting around and so meeting some of the. This is like a highlight of your day. So this far. is. This absolutely is a highlight of my day. So I'm meeting some of the other filmmakers and yes. uh, the people working for the festival and, and you find people. And uh, I'm having a great time so far, and I expect to have an even better time once I'm, I'm firmly ensconced in the machinery of Cinequest uh, 20. So, Seth, <laughs> I want to thank you for your time. Absolute and really pleasure. enjoyed Peepers. It's playing here at CineQuest 20. Do you know the times, days? It is Come playing, uh, yes, it's playing, I believe, 9, 9.30 on uh, Friday, and then uh, also on Sunday and Tuesday, so there's a lot of opportunities to uh, peep. Yes, pardon me. I'm sorry, I had to do that. Apologies. <laughs> Apologies to your audience. Practiced it. So anyway, thank you for your time, and we're going to now head off to, I think it's Il Fernayo for one of many so soirees here at CineQuest 20. And this is where you do the Maverick move. I think it's like oh, this. Oh yeah, what, what yeah. is it? I think it's, it's like this. Thing? It's like this or like this. I don't know if it, uh, one means like... <laughs> oh, two? There. Okay. okay. I'm All wondering right. like if you do the wrong way, is it like a swear word or something, This right? might be 2020, so might not be correct. to rear, rear view windows. <laughs> yes, no, rear window, yeah. Rear window, right? Yeah. Rear window. Rear view mirrors or rear window?